From the mighty kings to sophisticated dukes, we all know these titles and their rankings. However, in the world of royalty, there are also marquises who rank below a duke. And throughout centuries, these noblemen played a vital role in the link between the citizen and higher royalty. However, even in the present world, there are modern day marquis who still hold substantial political and financial power in the society. But do you know who these noblemen are and how rich they are? Probably not. In today's video, we'll bring you a list of the 12 richest marquises in the world. So without further ado, let's get it started. At number 12, we have the nobleman from Peru. This is George Mario I, Marquis of Vargas Llosa. George Mario Pedro Vargas Llosa was born in 1936 in Alquipa, Peru. However, unlike the Marquis of the list, he was not born into an aristocratic family. Rather, his parents Ernesto Varg Vargas Valdonado and Doro Ureta were commoners, and later he adopted the surname Vargas Losa as a combination of both family names. His prominence started from literature, especially novels, as an author. In his work, he delved into a wide range of themes, and in acknowledging his talents, he was awarded the Nobel Prize in Literature in 2010. A year later, in 2011, he was granted the title of Marcus of Vargas Losa by King Juan Carlos I of Spain. Now the net worth of this 87-year-old nobleman is around $5 million, and none of it comes from any inherited wealth from the family. But as a prolific author, Vargas Losa's earnings primarily come from his book sales and royalties. His novel essays and other literary works have been published internationally and translated into numerous languages, which generate millions from this author. Apart from his earnings and his work, he has substantially invested in various financial investments and assets from anywhere between one to two million dollars which only adds to his wealth. Next we have a nobleman from Spain and this is Manuel Falco y Gria, the 13th Marquess of Castelmancayo. Manuel Falco y Gria, more commonly known as Manolo Falco, was born in the year 1964 in Woodland, California. He's the son of Carlos Falco, the 5th Marquess of Grignon. The ancestry of this nobleman can be traced back through the intricate threads of Spanish peerage and extending even further into history. His lineage even links him with the notable figures such as the mighty El Gran Capitan, which only enriches his historical heritage. Despite coming from a rich noble family, he understood the challenges of modern times and went on to create a career in the financial sector as a commoner where he worked as a banker in Citigroup. However, this changed in 2020 when he assumed the mantle of title Marquisette of Castel Moncayo, which solidified his status within Spanish nobility. Now, the net worth of this Spanish nobleman is around $10 million. Most of it is inherited wealth that includes arts and artifacts, castles and land. In fact, he owned more than 500 acres of land across Spain, and this inherited land mostly consisted of historical estates, agricultural land, and even wine race. Apart from his massive inherited wealth, 20% of his net worth also comes from his long career in the financial sector as a banker and investor. At number 10, we have Michael Andrew, the 13th Marquess of Lothian, Baron Kerr of Monteviat. Michael Andrew Foster Jude Kerr was born as the Earl of Arkram into the prestigious Kerr family, which traces its roots to the Scottish border. However, while growing up, he developed a sense of serving the people, and due to this reason, he joined the national politics in the United Kingdom. And throughout his career, this nobleman has held various notable positions showcasing his commitment to public services. His diplomatic ventures and political roles have helped strengthen ties between nations and navigate complex international issues. However, a big moment came for him when he received the title of Marquess of Lothian in 2004 after succeeding his father Peter Kerr, 12th Marquess of Lothian. Now coming to the wealth and net worth of this Marquess is around $15 million. Around 90% of it is associated with his family's historical land holdings, investments, and estates, which were earned through the centuries. But the most prominent of these assets is this one, the ancestral seat of the Kerr family, Monteviat House, which is now worth more than $5 million but more than its value, it stands as a testament to the enduring presence in Scotland. Apart from this, he also owns around 900 acres of land, which generates yearly income anywhere between thirty dollars to $60,000. Moving on, we have Charles Maurice Petty Fitzmaurice, the ninth Marquess of Lansdowne. Charles Maurice Petty Fitzmaurice was born 1941 with the titles of Earl of Kerry and Earl of Shelburne. He's the son of George Petty Fitzmaurice, eighth Marquess of Lansdowne, and his wife Anne Evelyn Beatrice Rawdon Hastings. Now his family belongs to the aristocrat Petty Fitzmaurice lineage, which has a long history of involvements in British politics, diplomacy, and society. 
However, following the footsteps of his ancestors, Charles Maurice stepped into politics in the United Kingdom, and with time he held many important positions, and later he even went on to take the position of Deputy Speaker of the House of Lords. But with the death of his dear father in 2001, he transitioned from Earl to the ninth Marquess of Lansdowne. And now as the Marquis, his net worth is more than $15 million. And like any other royal, a large portion of his wealth can be found in the form of 1,526 acres of land holdings in country of Limerick. However, among his extensive wealth and possessions, Bowood House in Wiltshire, England, stands out as the most valuable asset he owns. It serves as the official family estate with an estimated value of more than $2 million. Next, we have a nobleman who's been active in British politics for a long time, and this is Nicholas Trench, the 9th Earl of Clancarty and 8th Marquess of Houston. Born November 26, 1952, Nicholas's heritage was deeply rooted in Irish and British history, and coming to his family, he comes from the Trench family, which is among the long-standing connections to the aristocracy, which played significant roles in various aspects of Irish society over the years. However, he became the head of his family in 1995 when he inherited the prestigious title of 8th Marquess after the death of his father. After this, as the 9th Earl of Clan Cardi, Nicholas Trench carries the weight of his family's historical and cultural heritage. With this title, he inherited 500 acres of vast land and estates in the United Kingdom and Ireland. This vast wealth of property has been accumulated by his family, which happened over several centuries. As in the past, land ownership was a primary source of wealth. Now, his inherited land includes agricultural lands, estate grounds, and even woodlands. However, all this takes the net worth of the 71-year-old Marquess to more than $20 million, with $2 million generated solely from rental household income and the commercial lands around Daniel Power Trench County in Galloway and other parts of the United Kingdom. At number 7, we have a British nobleman with a successful business career. This is Selwyn Thin, the 8th Marquess of Bath. Selwyn so Henry Laszlo's Thin was born 1974 as the son of Alexander Thin, the seventh Marquess of Bath and Anne Gale, an American-born model, whereas his family is a historic British aristocrat family called the Thin family. However, despite his royal lineage, this nobleman focused on his career and emerged as a market specialist at Caspian Securities in London in 2008. Later in 2010, he even took on a directional role in Finmentron AB, a Swedish firm. With his successful career as a businessman, he's said to have earned more than $5 million. However, he became the 8th Marquess of Bath upon the passing of his father in April 2020. Now the net worth of this 49-year-old nobleman is around $30 million. This is, of course, coming from his inherited wealth as a nobleman. In fact, his family holds the title of Marquess of Bath, which comes from his association with the Longleat House, which is a historic stately home located in Wiltshire, England. At present, it is worth $10 million. This estate also includes Longley at Safari Park, which is a popular tourist attraction. Apart from this, he owns a 9,000-acre estate in Wiltshire worth more than $13 million. Next, we have David Cholmondeli, the seventh Marquess of Cholmondeli. David George Philip Cholmondeli was born 1960 in London, England. He's the son of Hugh Cholmondeli, the sixth Marquess of Cholmondeli, and belongs to the illustrious Cholmondeli family, which has close ties to the British royalty. Over the years, this royal family has played significant roles in British history and society, and due to their connections with the royal family, David and his family are granted them privileges and his recognition within the British aristocrat circles. Now, with a keen appreciation for art, he's been active in the film industry as a filmmaker where he directed Other Voices, Other Rooms in 1995, and Shadow in the Suns in 2009. However, he became the seventh Marquess of Chomondeli in 1990, succeeding his father after his death. Now, the net worth of the 63-year-old Marquess is $115 million. One of the key factors contributing to David Cholmondeli's wealth is his vast estate that he manages, like the $50 million worth Houghton Hall in Norfolk. Spanning over a thousand acres, this includes woodlands, farmlands, and historic buildings. This grand estate not only holds historic value, but also provides David the opportunities for revenue generation through various ventures, including agricultural activities and tourism. Apart from this, he also owns $30 million worth of Chamondeli Castle, which is surrounded by a 7,500-acre land estate near Malpas, Cheshire. At number five, we have William Alexander, the King of the Netherlands, and Marquis of Veer in Flushing. Born in 1967, William Alexander Klaus George Ferdinand is the eldest son of Queen Beatrix and Prince Klaus. 
He ascended to the throne to become the king on April 30th, 2013 after the abdication of his mother, Queen Beatrix. Apart from his king title, he is associated with the titles of Marquis of Veer and Flushing. These titles hold significance in the context of Dutch maritime history, whereas Veer and Flushing used to be vital ports during the country's golden age of exploration and trade. As the head of the Dutch royal family of Marquis of Veer and Flushing, His Majesty's embraced his role as a constitutional monarch, fulfilling ceremonial duties. Now the net worth of this 56-year-old Marquis is around $100 million, and most of his wealth comes from his inherited wealth. This includes grand places, like this one, the $30 million worth Nordindi Palace, or the $50 million worth Royal Palace Amsterdam, located in Amsterdam. This palace is often used for official function and ceremonies. And apart from his royal inheritance as a head of the estate, he also received 10 to $20 million from the Dutch government for his royal duties. And all this all only adds up to his overall royal wealth, which is exempt from any kind of taxes. Next, we have Spencer Douglas, David Compton, the seventh Marquis of Northampton. Spencer, also known as Spency, was born in 1965 into the Compton family, which is a prominent British aristocrat family of the United Kingdom. His parents are Charles Compton, the sixth Marquis of Northampton, and Lady Anne Fitzroy. This lineage places him within the ranks of British peerage. But he became the head of his prestigious lineage in 1978, when he received the title of 7th Marquis of Northampton after the passing of his father. However, Spenny's noble background led him to a life that combines both traditional and modern pursuits. After completing his education, he embarked on a diverse career that includes ventures into business, real estate, and investment. His business acumen and strategic decision contributed to the expansion of his family's wealth and assets. Now, the net worth of this nobleman is around $185 million. It is listed on Sunday's Times Wealthiest People in the UK, and around $145 million of it comes from his royal inheritance, which includes the estate around Northampton, worth more than $160 million. He also owns art and artifact collections worth around $10 million in total that contains a hoard of late Roman Empire silver. Apart from his inheritance, his involvement in various business sectors allows him to accumulate substantial wealth, which amounts to more than $5 million. At number three, we have George Mountbatten, the fourth Marquess of Milford Haven. George Ivor Lewis Mountbatten was born June 6, 1961. He's the son of David Mountbatten, the third Marquis of Milford Haven, and Janet Mercedes Bryce. As a nobleman, he belongs to the extended British royal family through his marital lineage. His maternal grandfather was Prince Andrew of Greece and Denmark, which makes him a great-grandson of Queen Victoria and second cousin to King Charles III. However, in 1970, George Ivor Lewis Mountbatten assumed the title of the fourth Marquis of Milford Haven after the passing of his father. Milford Haven is a hereditary title that has been passed down through generations. As for his inherited wealth, much of it can be attributed to the family's historical holdings, investments, and properties. His inherited wealth includes more than 1,500 acres of land in Milford Haven worth around $10 million. Apart from this, he also owns a small art collection worth more than $1 million. Now, with a net worth of the 62-year-old, it's around $230 million. But unlike most of the other Marquesses, most of his wealth comes from his career, where he made $200 million by selling U Switch in 2006, a website founded in 2000 that helps consumers compare and change suppliers of various services. Next, we have George Spencer Churchill, the Marquis of Blandford. George William Godolphin Spencer Churchill was born in 1992. His parents are Jamie Spencer Churchill, the 12th Duke of Marlborough, and Rebecca Mary. As a member of the Spencer Churchill family, he's connected to the prestigious lineage of Dukes of Marlborough and through his parental grandmother, the Spencer family, which includes the late Diana, Princess of Wales. This lineage places him within the realm of British nobility with connection to various historical events and figures. However, upon the passing of his father, October 16, 2014, he inherited his notable title to become the Marquess of Blandford. After becoming a Marquess, he also inherited an immense amount of wealth, which is now estimated to be more than $315 million. Now, and all this wealth includes extensive estates and investments and inheritances associated with aristocrat lineage. However, a portion of his inherited wealth includes a $50 million worth of estate that contains vast tracts of land, including agriculture, commercial, and residential properties, contributing to his affluent lifestyle. But the grandest possession of this nobleman is the Blenheim Palace, which is spread over 2,000 acres of land and is estimated to be worth more than $250 million. Additionally, he also generated over $2 million through his successful career as a model. In fact, he served as both a model and a brand ambassador for the renowned Le Martina Polo clothing and accessory brand in 2015. 
At number one, we have a nobleman who's been active in British politics for a long time, and this is Robert Glascoyne, the seventh Marquess of Salisbury. Robert Michael James Glasconi Cecile was born in 1946 to Robert Glasconi Cecile, the sixth Marquess of Salisbury, and belongs to the Cecil family. For a long period, his historic aristocrat family has been renowned for their political influence, immense wealth, and contributions to British governance. All this past influence played out for young Robert when he set foot in politics. From an early age, he was selected as a Conservative Party candidate for South Dorset in 1976, and later he held several significant political roles, including serving as a Member of Parliament for South Dorset, and later representing the House of the Lords as a hereditary peer. However, in 2003, he became the seventh Marquess of Salisbury. Now the lifestyle of the Marquess of Salisbury reflects his aristocrat heritage, and this shows in his net worth, which is around $434.55 million. This net worth includes inherited extensive land holdings that stretch from Hatfield to Cranbourne Manor, Dorset, and this covers 10,000 acres worth more than $85 million and a $20 million worth Cranbourne Manor, the estate in Dorset. Apart from the land, he also owns Hatfield House in Hertfordshire, which is worth more than $50 million. However, this constant source of income has been his company called Glasscoin Cecile Farm, which generates more than $5 million for him. Thanks for watching the video. Comment down below your favorite part and let us know. Also, press the subscribe button and bell icon for regular updates.